very pleased to uh, present uh, a talk on the opportunities and challenges I witnessed in the three party negotiations on the JERT. My name is Yago Vastano from Atisawa University. When we talk about the uh, Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, there are several issues. One of those issues is uh, the continuous negotiation between Ethiopia, Egypt, and, and Sudan. As a matter of uh, uh, introduction, I have the following points to share with you. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is under construction for the last 11 years. And uh, this dam is not the first one in the Nile Basin. It is one of the last dams in the long list of dams built during the past uh, uh, 100 or so uh, years. The Tripartite negotiations on the JERT has been going on uh, in, in, during the past 10 years, uh, past 11 years uh, rather, uh, without any uh, uh, without any big solution. Uh, this uh, uh, presentation therefore looks into the uh, opportunities and challenges of the three tripartite negotiation. Like I mentioned, uh, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is not the first one in the Nile Basin. Uh, there are uh, several dams so far constructed uh, in the Nile Basin, especially in the Eastern Nile Basin. For example, in Egypt, uh, we have uh, the first Aswan Dam, uh, which was completed in 1902. Uh, then we have High Aswan Dam, uh, which, was con con which was completed in 1970. Uh, there is an El Salam uh, transfer uh, of water through uh, under the sea uh, pipelines uh, under the Red Sea uh, to Sanai, uh, which was completed in 1980s. And Toshka Dam, which uh, transfers water from uh, the uh, Aswan Hai Dam uh, to the south. West, Western Egyptian uh, areas, which is highly uh, hot uh, and desert area. When it comes to Sudan, uh, we have also dams like the Senar Dam, which was constructed in 1925. And there is uh, also another dam on the White Nile. Uh, known as uh, Jabal Aulia, which was constructed in 1936. Then another uh, dam which was constructed uh, on Abai or Blue, Blue Nile in Sudan is the Rosares Dam, uh, which was completed in 1917 and uh, uh, reinforced uh, again in 2013. Uh, another big dam in Sudan is known as Meroe Dam, uh, which was completed in 2009. When we come to Ethiopia, uh, there are also a uh, uh, few, uh, quite a few uh, important dams. Uh, one is Finja Dam, which was completed in 1970. Abobo Dam on uh, the branch of Baro uh, River, in the, in, the, in the West. It was also completed in 1980s. There's Takaze Dam, uh, which was completed in 1909, and Anabales Diversion, uh, which was also completed in 2010. But this uh, shows to us very easily that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which started in 2011, is not the only dam. It may be unique, 
but it is not uh, the only that. So uh, negotiations on Grand Egyptian uh, Renaissance Dam should not, should not be looked at a peculiar situation and should not be looked at the only dam that threatens the uh, countries in the uh, downstream. Their own dams uh, should be looked into and improved in terms of environmental impacts and social uh, economic uh, conditions, uh, as these dams can alter very easily and very substantively lives in the downstream of those dams, both in Sudan and uh, in Egypt. So uh, the fear about the Grand uh, Ethiopian, Ethiopian Grand Renaissance Dam is uh, highly uh, exaggerated and uh, highly politicized by the downstream uh, countries, while Ethiopia uh, uh, land and has projected uh, uh, this dam will be uh, very beneficial, uh, not only for Ethiopia's development, but also for uh, the benefits of uh, the downstream countries in uh, several ways, uh, like uh, 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 improving uh, the uh, silt accumulation uh, uh, that goes to downstream countries. Uh, it also uh, improves uh, water regulated water flow to downstream countries. Uh, it will uh, also uh, improve uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, power uplift in downstream dams uh, from the regulated water and from the regular flow. The downstream countries can get more hydropower from their own previously constructed uh, dams. And the Ethiopian dam uh, produces electricity uh, that can be uh, pulled to the downstream countries at uh, a cheaper, uh, uh, cheaper tariff uh, 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 mechanisms uh, and so on. So the benefits are uh, sort to be uh, looked into more positively by the downstream countries. And then, uh, 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 on water resources and contribute effectively to the completion of the gap for the benefit of more than 70 million people who lack electricity today. Permit me finally to share with you a personal note why I'm thrilled and energized by this symposium. Which are uh, comprised four internationally recruited, uh, well known experts uh, in hydrology, in environment, uh, 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 and uh, resources, in, in socioeconomic impacts, uh, and also. Uh, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan to work together with the international experts uh, who were established on the basis of their expertise, uh, an internationally uh, recruited group of people. Uh, each of uh, the three uh, countries uh, uh, participated uh, in the uh, international panel of experts so that uh, uh, they can give their own input during the consultation and during uh, the evaluation of the panel, uh, whether or not there is the impact of the dam uh, on downstream countries, or whether or not the dam is constructed in a, a fully uh, a satisfactory way in terms of its uh, uh, quality and uh, standard and, and, and the safety. Then the uh, three apartheid, uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, independent panel of experts came up 
uh, with a recommendation uh, uh, which has uh, two aspects. Uh, the first aspect of the recommendation is that uh, uh, the grant is uh, uh, well designed and uh, uh, well planned. The construction is uh, 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 well uh, uh, well constructed in terms of keeping the international standard. The second aspect of the report is that uh, uh, if there would be any uh, environmental or social economic impacts on the downstream countries, uh, the three countries can uh, establish uh, uh, a study group, uh, study firm, and uh, get consultation on how to mitigate if there is any uh, negative impact. So uh, to follow up on this, uh, the, uh, uh, the three countries established uh, a tripartite national uh, committee, which is uh, uh, constituted uh, from uh, water affairs uh, ministers uh, of the uh, three countries and the tripartite uh, uh, national uh, committee uh, followed up uh, the recommendations of uh, uh, the uh, international panel of experts, uh, especially uh, on the uh, recommendation uh, uh, of uh, uh, other uh, possibilities of further study on uh, environmental and social uh, impacts on downstream uh, countries. So uh, the three countries uh, uh, hired uh, an international firm uh, to study as uh, uh, required by the, uh, the panel's uh, recommendation. Uh, but this study will not proceed because Egypt uh, uh, wanted uh, that this study uh, should be based on uh, Egypt's prior utilization of the water resources, based on the uh, uh, 1929 uh, historical and uh, uh, natural rights agreement, uh, which was reached between Egypt and uh, UK. Uh, and uh, uh, also, they required this study should, should take into consideration uh, the 1959 Sudanese Egyptian agreement. Uh, which established, uh, of course, wrongly, uh, the full utilization of the Nile waters between the two countries. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, kind uh, of uh, a demand uh, uh, from Egypt will not be accepted by Ethiopia. Ethiopia wanted a study to be based on uh, uh, fresh uh, data, and uh, it should be uh, also uh, addressing uh, the impact uh, situation uh, on a fresh ground uh, and uh, the findings should be also based on uh, fresh data gathered from the uh, three countries. And, uh, uh, the, uh, the study uh, could not uh, proceed because of this uh, uh, problem. Uh, the negotiation uh, stalled for uh, quite uh, a number of months, uh, then the three countries uh, came together at the uh, foreign ministerial level. Uh, they initiated together uh, the, the negotiation for uh, declaration of principles in order to move uh, forward. So uh, the, uh, the negotiation for the declaration of uh, principles, how to go about the negotiation, uh, especially on the feeling and uh, operation uh, of the Grand Egyptian Renaissance Dam uh, at the uh, end of uh, the three part time negotiation at the foreign ministerial level. Uh, there was a uh, uh, document uh, which resulted from this uh, negotiation, uh, which was signed uh, uh, by the leaders of the three countries on March 23, uh, 2015. Then uh, the, uh, the DOP, the Declaration of uh, Principles, uh, has a very important uh, uh, provisions, uh, 10 of them, uh, but in the provisions, uh, uh, there are uh, important articles uh, that would uh, help uh, to move forward uh, one is uh, that uh, 
uh, uh, Ethiopia uh, to continue, uh, of course, the dam construction. Uh, Ethiopia has continued in any way. Uh, uh, but uh, at, at the same time, uh, the filling of the dam uh, uh, can take place uh, while uh, construction is uh, uh, being done. That is, uh, filling of the dam uh, can take place in parallel to the construction of the dam. That is a very important result uh, from uh, the DOP uh, negotiation, and uh, uh, that was signed uh, between the three countries. And uh, another important uh, uh, provision is that uh, uh, the three uh, countries, uh, in case of uh, disagreement or differences, uh, they can, uh, you know, uh, solve uh, their problem through negotiation or conciliation, or uh, they can resort to uh, mediation. And when uh, the three countries agree in, 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 in with one voice. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the, the, the the negotiation again uh, did not move fast uh, and uh, uh, was very difficult, uh, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, to reconcile, especially the positions of uh, Egypt and Ethiopia, uh, because of this uh, reason again. Uh, the three countries uh, at the uh, level um, in, in January uh, 2018 uh, came up to establish a, a nine party uh, negotiation, which means uh, foreign ministries of the three countries, water ministries of the three countries, and uh, the heads of uh, security departments of the three countries. Now, the uh, nine party negotiation took on. Uh, they had uh, two uh, uh, meetings, uh, one in Khartoum uh, in, uh, in, in, in April uh, 2018, and another one in, uh, uh, in Addis Ababa uh, in May 15, 2018. But they could not uh, come to, uh, uh, to an agreed recommendation. Uh, on the question of feeling and uh, operation of, of the dam. Therefore, they recommended uh, that uh, uh, independent uh, uh, national uh, scientific or national independent scientific research group to be established uh, to come up with a technically uh, appropriate uh, recommendation to the countries to uh, decide how to go about uh, the feeling and operation of, of, of the dam. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is now in the final stage of construction and the negotiation uh, is not going uh, uh, ahead and uh, uh, the countries and the international community uh, will view this in, uh, the, the, in, a, uh, in an objective manner uh, so that uh, these countries can come uh, to uh, a considerate uh, a process of negotiation and uh, the reach agreement, uh, which is beneficial to uh, uh, all parties downstream and upstream countries. Thank you for uh, your listening. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yakov. So we are not going to take any questions and comments now because we have two more uh, presentations to be made uh, by uh, Dr. Balata from Adisawa University and uh, Dr. Abdullah from Professor Abdullah from Arbamich University. But to say a few words uh, from what Professor Yakov said, he he really walked us through on the process of negotiations and discussions among the three countries. Uh, he touched a little bit about the. Declaration of Principles, the tripartite negotiations, even the nine party negotiations, and also the different types of efforts. He a little bit summarized also on the uh, infrastructures, the water infrastructures we have in Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt, and also the history of uh, all these constructions and efforts to share the Nile water, which is between Egypt and Sudan, neglecting Ethiopia. 
So with that, uh, now let me invite uh, the next speaker, uh, which will be uh, Dr. Balata. Dr. Balata Brahadu is an associate professor, but also he is a member of the technical negotiation team of GERD, and he is uh, quite an essential part of that effort. <clears throat> His talk will be the water, food, and energy nexus uh, in the GERD. Uh, he is in the Addis Ababa Institute of Technology at Addis Ababa University. Dr. Balata, please take.
ready za nazaren so so 